Hello, I'm Brian from the Two Clock Database. Today we're looking at the modular VFD clock. It's a, it's a very hacker-friendly device. It comes in two parts. There's the CPU board and the display shield. Right now, we've got the uh, four-digit IN17 alphanumeric uh, tubes installed. There are other options I'll talk about later in the review. Um, but what I really like about this is the firmware is actually open source. So you can download it, modify it yourself, and uh, run it right on this device. So if you don't want to have to go through the hassle of engineering the hardware to experiment with uh, VFD tubes or something like that, this makes a really good base platform to learn from. So let's take a closer look at it. Let's begin with the device walkthrough. This is the size of a credit card. So you can see it's actually kind of a petite device. It's not much taller than a credit card. And here is our standard reference can of Diet Coke. Great, let's get those out of the way. Let's do a walkthrough. This device is actually built out of these uh, acrylic or plastic pieces here. So if you could see me kind of uh, holding them on, it's because they want to move a little bit. Um, it would be a good idea once you're done with your device to tack these down with glue, but that makes the review process a little more difficult. Let's just get these off here and take a look at the insides. Here, I'll unplug this. And so you can see the enclosure is made up of uh, a couple of these pieces of plastic that only fit together one way and form a nice little protective case for it. And the device itself is actually um, even smaller. So the power just goes right in the back here. You can hear it do its boot up thing a little bit. Um, and it comes in as two shields. And so let me just carefully remove these. There we go. And we can see we've got, and I'll show you close ups of these here in a second, the basically the logic board and the display board. Here's a close up of the device. As you can see, it's got a really attractive black PCB. Um, one of the side effects, however, is that it's kind of difficult for me to get a good shot of it. So let's disconnect the power and take a closer look. Try to be gentle here. There we go. This is a display shield. Maybe help if that was in focus a little bit. There are other options. There's an IV6, an IV22, and an IV18 shield available. And they really don't have much in terms of logic on them. It's really just an electrical connection. You can see about the only other component here are the resistors for the displays. Um, it's kind of a nice little elegant setup. You can swap these out here without too much difficulty. And that sits nicely on this display, or excuse me, this baseboard. Here are the connectors for the uh, display shields. We've got the DC input here. We've got two buttons and a switch here for setting menu items and the time, turning the alarm on and off. Uh, battery backup is good for several days. Um, it's been disconnected probably for a week while it was shipped to me and it managed to keep the time. And this is the header for the uh, in-circuit programmer. So if you want to take the open source hardware, or excuse me, open source firmware, modify it, add a new feature, you can re-upload it to here and test out your design. And so this acts as a really good uh, development board where you don't have to worry about the electrical engineering component as much. Uh, you can just simply concentrate on adding features to the software. I want to take one more second here and talk about the enclosure. Um, right now as the device shipped to me, these three pieces are glued together. Um, if this is just going to sit on your desk and you're not going to uh, tinker with it any, it wouldn't be a bad idea to glue in the rest of the pieces. Uh, I set these here in the alignment so I think I can get them right, but I'll just show you kind of what I'm talking about. Everything here is uh, kind of precision cut, so either it fits really well or it doesn't fit at all. Um, so they form this little uh, rectangular prism. Um, if it just sits on your desk, I'd put a couple tacks of glue here, something you could break if you needed to. But the pieces, you know, as I handle this, do come off a little bit and will fall off. Uh, I wouldn't leave it around a little kit or something like that. Oops, just like that. And on the back side, uh, we've got the user controls are recessed a little bit. Uh, you're not going to bump these by accident. In fact, you kind of have to stick your finger in there a little bit. You can't just rest it on the surface. Um, I don't think it's either good or bad. It's just a function of the design here. But it works reasonably well. You're not going to accidentally change the time on this device. Let's talk about the displays here for a minute. I've manually stopped down the exposure so we can get a better idea of what the tubes actually look like. They're not filming too well because there's a bright light source coming in from behind the camera, basically reflecting off the glass on the tubes. Um, but they are actually really visible even in a brightly lit room. 
Um, this is more just a function of the how my camera is set up than anything else. You can see they are flickering a little bit. Um, you don't actually notice that in real life. They are a multiplex display, or at least this is set up as such. And so depending on the, uh, the settings of my camera, the flicker will be more or less noticeable. But in real life, it's not something you'll ever notice. Now let's go to the menu here. If we press the first button, we can have it display the seconds. And we're gonna see it's 54 seconds here. Switch back to the hours and minutes and it will swap here in just a second. So as you can see, there really aren't any um, display transitions or anything like that, but you have access to the source code if you wanted to add it or you found someone else who's modified, you can certainly load it onto this device and add new features. The other button is for changing the menu items. Change the brightness, 24 or 12 hour mode, I like 24 hour mode. And the volume, and the volume is for the beeper. Um, it's loud enough to wake you up in the morning if that's what you want. Uh, I don't know if this makes the world's best uh, alarm clock considering that if you tend to hit your alarm clock like I do, this would be kind of dangerous. But uh, it functions, it does exactly what you'd expect it to. Uh, I kind of actually like the simplicity of the menu structure. Um, there are a lot of clocks that have you know almost too many features um, and you have to build out a more elaborate menu scheme. Um, but this is something you can just kind of pick up and learn on your own. Um, the only other thing worth noting back here again is the switch which we use to turn the alarm on and off. I like that it has a physical switch for that. Uh, frequently I'll screw up something in the menu and not realize it and have the alarm go off at 2 or 3 in the morning or something like that. And having a switch which shows me that the device is always off uh, I think is a really elegant solution to that problem. So here's where I give my final thoughts on the device. I do really like the footprint. Having a cluttered desk like mine, <laughs> it's definitely easier to find a spot for something like this than it is a much larger clock. I like that it uses VFDs. I don't think they get enough attention from the Nixie community. They're relatively inexpensive. I think they have a really cool look to them. But above all else, I really like how hacker friendly this is. And I don't just mean that the uh, firmware is open source and you can modify it and tweak it and do whatever you want to with it. But what I mean is the fact that it's only $104 as well. So for that price, you get a printed PCB, you get the components you need, and all you need to do is assemble it. You don't have to worry about engineering or anything like that, but it allows you to very rapidly start playing with uh, VFD displays. And when other shields are available, you don't have to worry about engineering there either. You can simply swap out the top shield with something else and learn about a, a different display. And so overall, I really like this gadget. It's certainly aimed at the hobbyist tinkering kind of market, but even if you just want it as a cool little clock, it functions well. It does exactly what you expect it to. Um, there aren't a lot of frills, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a nice, simple clock, and you know it kind of looks cool sitting on your desk. Being able to see through it and see the components is definitely a plus. Um, and overall, I really like this design. I hope you check it out. I'll post links to the seller in the, uh, in the written review and some more photos after this.